everybody. Welcome to Evening TV and the Noah Radio Show. I was, you know, as you might expect, feeling pretty emotional, pretty lonesome, pretty down. Being not only that it's the 16th year that I've been estranged from my mother on Mother's Day, but it's the first year since my son died. I thought, you know, I'll look for some videos. So I figure we have all the, you know, all of us are all, ta all the time talking about narcissistic mothers and this and the other thing and all the, all, all the time no contact and all this stuff. So I thought surely there are going to be tons of videos about grieving for your strange mother on Mother's Day or, you know, grieving for relationships that are lost even though the people are still alive. And there was nothing except for something that really surprised me and I'm not sure what to think about it. My initial feeling is not so good. There were no, virtually no adult children like me and like a lot of you making videos about how sad it is to be estranged from your mother on Mother's Day, even though she's alive and well. But there were quite a few mothers estranged from their adult children. And there's all kinds of support groups for mothers estranged from their adult children. And I'm thinking to myself, why would this be? And you know, of course, and of course these mothers are all acting very victimized, they're all acting very, very sad, and, and they're all connecting and they're all talking about how sad and terrible it is. So I tried I tried about it for quite a while. I couldn't get to the root of why any of these how this originally originally started. You know, what happened? I never could get to that with any of these videos that I was watching. And I had this horrific thought. Here's the thought. Are these parents like my parents? Is this what they're doing now? Because I happen to know that my parents are now saying, she abandoned us. I know that's what they're saying. Because... I've heard it kind of come, you know, because they have to say something anyway, right? They have to say something. So that's, of course, the best explanation. Apparently, for about the last decade, it's been, we're so sad because our ungrateful daughter has turned her back on the family. And this is also how they justify keeping my inheritance from my grandmother and all that stuff is because I'm no longer a member of the family by my own choice. That they were there, that still these loving parents, and I just rejected everybody. This is what they're, this is what they tell themselves and what they tell anybody who might still ask at this point. And I'm thinking to myself, what's to stop my parents from joining this kind of group beginning, you know, starting making YouTube videos about my, you know, how sad this is that there's, that I'm now estranged from my, my adult, my ungrateful adult daughter who's, you know, I'm so grieving and so sad. Because I'm sitting here thinking, what is the explanation? You know, what could be the explanation? Okay, I, I really did try and come up with real reasons why these people could really be victims. There was a therapist on, the, on one, of the, one of these things I saw, and he said that he was estranged from his daughter for a while because he had a blended family. When, okay, so he, was, he had her, this one daughter when he was very young and got divorced when he was very young. Then remarried and started another family later on in life and this first daughter felt displaced and probably got you know some alienation kind of stuff probably happened with her mother so on and so forth and so for several years he said she didn't want she didn't want to see him she didn't really want to have much to do with him and that was a really hard time for him and they've worked it out since okay that I can see with a really young kid a young a young kid before they know the whole story but not forever and not and these people were like the age of my parents, so their kids were like, their, you know, their kids were like my age, and you know, we have grandkids, like, you know what I mean? So this is, you know, it, by the time you're my age, you know better. You know, you've been through raising kids yourself, you know, you can see both sides of things, you know if someone's manipulating you, you've been there, you've been through the hard stuff, you're not as super judgmental. And so for you to be alienated from your mother, after you've been through stuff and you know how precious things are, and you know how precious life is, and you know how precious relationships are, and how precious love is, and how precious family is, if you're estranged from your mother at, at, at this age, it's going to be for some really big reason. 
So this was really bothering me, you know, so what I think is, what I think is going on, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to speak out of children because it's, you know, please do write to me in the comments and tell me if you can t you know, explain this to me where there's a legitimate thing going on. But what it looks like to me is it looks to me like a bunch of narcissistic parents are banding together and making support groups uh, and acting like victims. You know, I don't know who out there has, you know, it's truly estranged the way that I am. But it's absolutely the absolute worst. It is far worse than if my, if my, if my parents had died 20 years ago, I would be in infinitely better shape. But I'm not talking about a parental alienation thing. We've got little kids and someone's run off with your kids. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about grown up kids, like over 18, probably even over 20, 30, beyond, telling their parents, I don't want a relationship with you anymore where it's gone on for years. I want to know, I want to know about that. I want to know what the background of that is. What's the explanation of that? Now, this therapist guy that I was talking about, where he had the daughter and she was doing this when she was young. But he said among his clients, who are presumably like his, his daughter, that some of the things were pretty petty. Some of the things were pretty petty that they're going through what that what I believe about that is that that is a passing thing that is probably a spoiled kid probably a kid who hasn't been through a lot of life experiences yet um who hasn't yet realized how grateful they are to have a parent who loves them hasn't realized how precious that is or who is just angry about a certain thing like that they didn't, you know, some really spoiled kid who didn't, whose parents didn't come through with something that they thought they were entitled to, something like that, where it's about a specific thing. But if it's, I want to, but I want to know about someone who's, who's even gone so far as to even maybe had children even, so they have grandchildren, and this has gone gone for a lot of years. I want to know why. I want to know why is that happening. What is the explanation? that that parent has for what's happened to their family. Wouldn't there be more of them who are being victimized by their children, their grown children, but, but presumably they have never victimized their children. They've never abused them. They've never mistreated them. They've never done anything wrong with them. They're just these loving, doting parents whose children have just turned their backs on the family, just exactly like my parents would describe it. This is exactly what my parents described, and this is exactly why it went up to me as a red flag. This is what my parents would say. Because what else can you say? You know what I mean? If you're going to go so far as to form a support group and make a YouTube channel or a podcast, you got to say something, right? I watched enough of this without getting to the bottom of anything that it was starting to really, if you can't tell, I was getting really kind of irritated and fired up about it because I started to smell a rat. A rat that smelled like narcissism to me. And I thought, no, this doesn't sound right. There was no scenario, no scenario I can come up with in my mind that makes it work for this to be a really good parent, a really good, devoted, loving parent the way they describe it, and have this outcome possibly happen. We want to love our parents. We want to believe they love us. We want to be together. We need our parents. We need our families. And especially if you're still raising kids, you do. You know, if you're still raising kids, you do. So my guess is that what's happened here is that these kids were abused or mistreated or neglected or something. We were all explaining it, that they cut us off. And there was no, no anything about drugs or anything like that. It was just, they cut us off. We just don't know why. And we're just so sad. And, and we just, you know, we try and try. And now they've got these, we can't see our grandkids. And, and we haven't seen them in six years and all this stuff. You know, here's how real it is. You know, you know, husband I talk about all the time. My sons, my son still saw him up to the, to the day he died. My son still sees him. That girl with the awful mother on the recordings that I, that I shared here, she still sees her mother. So how bad does a mother have to be and for how long before this happens? I want to know, I, want, I would love for someone to share with me a sad story for an estranged mother with an adult child where they were really a really good mom and this just came out of the blue. I would love to talk to the child doing that, the grown child that's doing that. Because 
that just doesn't, that just, I don't see that happening. I've had an open door to my parents. Always. Always. And I think really truly, it only fully closed when my son died and I still haven't heard from them. I don't know, maybe not even then. I don't know. Uh, you know, if they were to call me up right now and say we're really sorry, I'd hear it. I would. I'd hear it. So, so yeah, so there you go. There you go. Even with all of that, not coming through when my son died, being the worst parents of all the parents in, in that whole jail experience, 16 years of estrangement, leaving me when I almost died. I got disabled. I was, they helped my husband rob me blind and take everything from me and destroy my children's childhoods and all of that. And I would still be open to hearing them if they wanted to talk to me. Okay, so I want to know what has happened to these estranged mothers with their sad stories. I really want to know. Any of you heard this where your parents are going, oh, you ungrateful kid, you, you've abandoned me, where they're like vying for sympathy because of your estranged relationship? Because that appears to be the thing. And oh, I'm making a video about, oh, it's so sad to be on Mother's Day when I have this estranged mother who's alive and well and lives right in my same town and I just haven't talked to her in 16 years because... I, I really don't know why. I don't know what she ever thinks I did. I didn't, she never has been able to tell me even what I did wrong. I really would like to know what scenario it is that, because I can't come up with one. I can't even come up with one that, that, would make their, that would make that be a sympathetic story. Yeah, I was just looking for someone who could say, me too, me too, sister. <laughs> and there was nobody up there. And then worst of all, there was the moms on there. I was like, oh my God, my mother would be able to go on here and find more to more people to commiserate with than I can. It's like, how is that happening? It's like, you know, it just seemed unreal to me. So I would love to know what any of you know about this. I really would. Hit the subscribe button down there. Share me on your social media. And I've been getting some great pictures of my little puppies, you guys. This is the greatest. This has been the greatest part. This is the best part of my mom, about my Mother's Day. Is my little, my new little two little puppies, my little boy and my little girl, Gigi and Jacques. And um, they're doing great now. They're gaining weight by leaps and bounds, and we're out of the woods. So that feels really good. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for listening, and I will talk with you real soon. Bye bye.